right. So there is this viral video going around showing that Kamala Harris is saying that when she wins the 2024 presidential election, I should say, if she wins the 2024 presidential election, then she would try to remove X because Musk has lost his privileges. Watch this. He has he has lost his privileges and it should be taken down. And, and the bottom line is that you can't say that you have one rule for Facebook and you have a different rule for Twitter. The same rule has to apply, which is that there has to be a, 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 a responsibility that is placed on these social media sites to understand their power. They are directly speaking to millions and millions of people without any level of, of, of oversight or regulation. And that has to stop. OK, so the clip is misleading. Um, it's misleading, but it's also, I think, very telling as to how the Democrats have behaved, what is likely to happen under a Harris presidency. But just to clarify, this clip was actually posted in 2019. This was after, this was while Kamala Harris was running for president in the 2020 presidential election. She was still in the game. She was interviewed by Jake Tapper, and she's specifically talking about Donald Trump. She's saying that Donald Trump has lost his privileges, that he's abused the platform, and that there needs to be controls on him. And if you remember, ultimately, at the time, Twitter did remove Donald Trump from Twitter. They did take his account down, which is incredibly shocking that a, a U.S. president would be censored from talking directly to the people. I mean, there's Kamala Harris saying, this is a power talking directly to the people. How dare the president of the United States have the ability to talk directly to the people? This needs to be stopped, is essentially what she's saying. And that pressure that Democrats put on these social media companies did ultimately censor the president, the former president, at the time, former president of the United States, all in an attempt, of course, to silence him and censor him so that he could not become the next president of the United States. But that's just the context of it. So I want to replay this now that you know the actual context, because this has been going around on Twitter. It has been uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. shared it. A lot of people have been sharing it. And the implication is that Harris is saying that if she becomes president in 2024, she's going to censor and silence and take down X the same way that Brazil has just taken down X because the implication is she's talking to e about Elon Musk losing his privileges. That's not actually what she's saying, but we're gonna go ahead and replay this for you so that you can see, now that you know the context that she's talking about Donald Trump and she's talking about removing him in 2019, this is, uh, this is now that you'll hear it in actual context. He has, he has lost his privileges and it should be taken down. And, and the bottom line is that you can't say that you have one rule for Facebook and you have a different rule for Twitter. The same rule has to apply, which is that there has to be a, 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 a responsibility that is placed on these social media sites to understand their power. They are directly speaking to millions and millions of people without any level of, of, of oversight or regulation. And that has to stop. Oh, that has to stop. The president is talking to these people with no oversight, no regulation, directly talking to the people. And that has to stop. This is an authoritarian brain. And here's the thing, even though this clip was from 2019 and, oh, it's an old clip and that's not what we, she's not saying she's going to remove X. That's what they want to do. We all know this. That's what they've attempted to do. They've certainly attempted to silence and censor anybody they don't agree with. They've done everything they can beyond the, the first step was removing Trump from Twitter. That was the first thing they did. Well, after, I guess, impeaching him twice, right? So they impeached him twice. They tried to go after him criminally for January 6th. They remove him from Twitter. They then throw lawsuit after lawsuit against him. They then try to remove him, ensure he can't run again. They tried to remove him from ballots. They've tried to remove him from earth. I mean, they've tried everything they possibly can to silence and censor this guy. So she does mean that, even though this is an old clip and this is her talking about Donald Trump, this is she does mean that she would want to censor and silence social media companies and they're winning on this mark zuckerberg recently came out saying sorry yeah democrats totally pressured us you know this was one of those it makes mark zuckerberg look kind of good because he's out there saying yeah yeah you know we complied it was totally the administration that censored us and pressured us and we won't do that again and then he says oh but you know we're not going to do any political content anymore on our platforms Meta's out of politics. We don't want anything. We're not going to promote or push or, um, you know, put, allow people to go viral who are talking anything political. No more politics on Meta. That is what, that's what Kamala Harris and what Democrats, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, you know, you watched her take in uh, Michael Schellenberger and Matt Taibbi when they were doing the Twitter files, when they were exposing the Twitter files, call them so-called journalists, calling for more censorship 
thinking that these people are dangerous, that anybody who doesn't agree with Democrats is just a dangerous authoritarian demagogue. Meanwhile, Democrats have completely given up on democracy entirely. We now have a candidate that nobody voted for. Uh, and so this is their mentality. This is what they want to do. They want X to follow Facebook suit and they want X to stop talking politics, stop boosting accounts that are talking politics. If they had it their way, X would be banned or it would be only for Democrats to propagandize Americans so, and then and, and censor anybody who has an opposing viewpoint because it's dangerous for you. It's dangerous for us. It's really just dangerous for Democrats power because people are waking up and they're on to them. Um, here's an interview that Glenn Beck just recently did with David Agape, who is a journalist in Brazil. So Brazil has banned X. And the latest update on that is X is still banned in Brazil. Elon Musk took the case to the Supreme Court of Brazil uh, or the appellate court. It went up another level. There was one judge that banned X and said, you're not allowed to be in the country anymore because you have, you failed to give us a legal representative of X to appoint a legal representative of X in the country. The reason why X doesn't want to appoint a physical legal representative is because they know that that person would be arrested. That Brazil, they're extremely authoritarian when it comes to speech, they don't allow free speech, and that they would jail a representative of Twitter, and Twitter doesn't want to be, or X, doesn't want to be responsible for having an employee go to prison. So they have refused to appoint a legal representative out of fear that that person would end up in jail because X refuses to censor users. And that's why they would be throwing that person into jail. Brazil wants users censored and X would not comply. And if they do not comply with court ordered censorship, then the legal representative would go to jail. So that's why X doesn't want to do it. The judge then ordered, this is Judge Moreas, who's very famous in Brazil. He's a Supreme Court level judge, and he is very famous for silencing, censoring, jailing, uh, going after uh, opposition. Uh, and he has banned X. He says, well, then if you're not going to appoint a legal representative, then you're out of the country. We're not going to allow you to do this. So uh, now X is no longer in Brazil. That's it. There's no X. And if you are in Brazil, which we do have a few creators in Brazil, some friends who are, you maybe watch their shows even, and they're in Brazil. I'm not going to say their names because I don't want to out them just in case. But if they're caught using a VPN, they could face very hefty fines. So Brazil is saying, not only can you not, not only can X not operate in Brazil, but you can't even do a workaround and use a VPN. Well, Glenn Beck recently interviewed David Agape, who is a journalist, an investigative journalist, a Brazilian investigative journalist. And David Agape says that he, um, that he worked on an investigation with Michael Schellenberger that revealed that the FBI, the U.S. FBI, was in Brazil for a conference with the Superior Electoral Court, which is their Supreme Court, to explain how to censor people. So our U.S. FBI was in Brazil helping the Brazilian government censor users in order to help take down X. Now, the US government can't do that to Americans in America because we have free speech, but other countries in the world do not have the First Amendment. They don't have free speech. So our government uh, apparently can go around to other countries and figure out ways to harm social media companies and to strong arm them into complying with censorship, even though the US can't do it directly. But if you get all these other countries to do it, then that would hobble a company and it would take the company down. Elon Musk needs more than the United States in order to make X profitable. He spent billions of dollars on this and needs more than Americans. It, it requires a worldwide social media network. And now apparently our government, according to this clip, which we're about to watch, uh, our government is apparently going around the country or around the world and helping other governments evade the first amendment because they don't have it and censor you users. Got, how is the united states involved in this you said that they were using the fbi uh to advise but what else are they doing okay yeah okay glenn uh, there's a not many others organizations in brazil that gave support intellectual support to the censorship applied over these years. We, we can uh, remember the Atlantic Council, mm -hmm. an institution that received 
money for the U.S. government, like uh, the the NAD. The NAD is the National Endowment for Democracy. Hmm. And the Atlantic Council was uh, very important to this, this process of censorship in Brazil. Uh, many uh, of these censorship that happen uh, will not happen if the Atlantic Council did not put the, their fingers in Brazil. And, and David, I understand other- that the... I understand that the um, either the State Department or our embassy is also directly involved in advising how to get rid of Musk. Is that true? Yes. The U.S. Embassy donates um, thousands, I, I can say, thousands of dollars uh, to Brazilian organizations pushing today to censor Elon Musk, as to censor the act. And it's, it's, it's crazy because uh, we, we, uh, many of them are trying to, they, they, the U.S. Embassy said these days they are watching closely what is happening in Brazil. And uh, like what uh, Mike, Mike Benz, the journalist, said, they was part of it. Yep. The accomplices of censorship in Brazil. So uh, it, it's very <laughs> uh, terrifying. Strange. Yeah, it's it's terrifying. It's terrifying that our government commits crimes around the world. You know, th- these are things that they're not allowed to do to U.S. citizens because it's against our constitution. But if they just step off U.S. soil and they do it to others in the world, then it's okay. That's terrifying that we don't have the same, it it should be where we have the same standards. We have a constitution, we have rights in this country that are afforded to Americans, but it's not just because we legally have to afford them to Americans. It should be a morality and an ethics of this country. It should be that we morally believe in these rights, not just for Americans, but for all people, but because we can't control the rest of the world and we can only give them to our people you know, that's just, that's the unfortunate reality. We wish we could give them to all people, but we can't. And, but otherwise we would if we could, right? That's that, well, and that's the whole premise for a lot of our wars. We're trying to spread democracy. We're trying to free people. We go around and we do all of these things. We try to oust dictators because we're trying to bring democracy and American values all around the world. But are we? We know that that's not the reality when it comes to these wars. We know that that's not the truth. That's just the gaslighting tactic, the, the phrases they tell us to make us feel warm and fuzzy on the inside about going to war and massacring people. But they don't even believe it, even when they go around the world, when the CIA and the FBI and any of our other intel agencies go around the world and they get away with treating people around the world as if they're lesser than, rather than, rather than having an ethics and a standard of we always apply American rights to all people, we just can't give them to all people, but we believe in them. It's our morals. It's our ethics. We don't even, be- that's the way we should be behaving around the world. Not, well, we can get away with it because that's not an American and it's not on American soil. So yay, we could just totally go and do all of these terrible things to people. We could murder them. We could torture them. We can censor them. We could do, we could do everything that we can't do to Americans. But as long as we're not on American soil and as long as we're not doing it to Americans, it's okay. And that is a way to hobble American companies. Now, there might be a lawsuit there. It seems to me like there should be. It seems to me like an American company would be able to say, my American government tried to take my American company down by using this loophole and going around the world and talking to governments about how they could better censor their citizens and what they could do, what resources, and how we scour the internet to find extremists and terrorists for them to censor, which is just really dissent. Uh, that's th- that. I would think there should be a lawsuit on that, just like there should have been, and there have been lawsuits regarding social media users being censored during the pandemic. Um, it was a, a head scratcher why that wouldn't, why the U.S. government could pressure a social media company, and why wouldn't that be viewed as an infringement on the First Amendment? Um, luckily there were groups of people like what we saw with the Missouri versus Biden case that did go and say, yeah, I think this might be an infringement on our first amendment rights and took that to court. Unfortunately, they did not win, but that, which 
makes should really make us question the validity of all these rights that we think that we have as American citizens and really the rights that we think that we're afforded that we afford for others because we're good because we're the good guys we're the heroes we're the American heroes we have the better way of life and we want to show others that this we have this better way of life but it doesn't look like we do and now Brazil uh, which is a very authoritarian country it turns out is now you can't get rumble in Brazil you can't get X in Brazil so um, that's that's where we're at with that big country is that they want to silence and censor opinions and they are effectively doing it and it is quite, quite scary.